Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be using the NX Vorticity modifier. And this is an amazing modifier. It's going to give us the ability to add some really realistic but aggressive swirling and natural eddies in our fluid simulation. So it's really good for simulating kind of large scale, noisy ocean scenes. So we'll start the clock and we'll get started. In our scene then we've set up this drop tank with a fluid sim. Let's just have a quick look at the emitter in the object tab. It's set to box mode 100 by 100 by 100 and in the emission we've got it set to hexagonal shot type and we've got zero speed and a radius of 1.5. We've got a default NX gravity in the scene and we've also got a completely default NX fluid solver in the PBD mode. So this is just as it is when you first bring it in. And we've got a scene geometry, this cube with an XP collider tag set to inside. That's giving us our um, collision geometry and there we have our sim so what we want to do is quite quickly this water with these nice kind of reflections and movement calms down as the solver goes through and it becomes this still uh, body of water we want to simulate some nice choppy kind of tidal movement in this and we can do it really realistically with a fantastic modifier which is nx vorticity so let's bring that in we'll go to the nexus menu let's bring in the nx vorticity modifier now it's important to note that depending on which fluid solver you're using pbd or sbh that will depend on how much strength you'll need to be using in the modifier. We're going to stick with PBD for now. So let's go into NX Vorticity. And with PBD, you don't need as much strength. So if we hit play on the default settings, we're not really going to get much difference. And what the NX Vorticity does, it analyzes the particle movement and it kind of multiplies and exaggerated any existing swirling and eddies in that current. But in our default settings, we're not really getting a lot. So first of all, what we're going to do is increase this radius, which is the search. Each particle looks for other particles within this amount and it analyzes their movement. So let's just put that up so more particles are being involved in that search. Let's put it up to say 150%. And if we hit play now, again, we're not really going to see much. It's going to be very difficult to even see any difference at all. There's perhaps a slightly ex exaggerated swirling going on, but it's very subtle. But if we now increase the strength, let's put our strength up to, say, 8%, you're going to see a big difference. So we have now splashed down, and yeah, look, we're getting loads more swirls which are kind of continuing and that movement and the reflections are being exaggerated amplified and look it's still swirling and it's, it's taken on a life of its own so that's looking really cool if we went even stronger we could go up to 20 percent and this is really starting to look like that tidal effect where you've got the tide going in one direction but a very strong wind going in another direction. Now arguably this is maybe a little bit too strong now. So what we can do is we can keep this look, this strength, but we can introduce a force limit. Because the vorticity is kind of a multiplying force, it builds and builds and builds. We can use the force limit to stop it from getting too much out of control, but still be a strong force. So look, let's put this force limit down to, say, 10. So now we've limited how much force it can produce. It's still, even a force of 10 is, is pretty angry, isn't it? So let's put it down to, say, 5. Yep, yeah, and that's just arrested that somewhat. But we're still getting these nice, big, exaggerated, continuing swirls in our uh, body of water. If we increase the radius, we will get more particles searched from a larger area. So we'll get a bigger, more um, kind of coherent swirl as it's including most of the particles in the simulation. Look, we're getting these much big, longer, more languid swirls. If we go down to a smaller radius, we can... Um, encourage it to be far more choppy with smaller eddies so that's looking really cool now let's just have a look at how this might work with our sbh solver so this is pbd if we go to our nx fluids 
and change the solver from PBD to SBH, let's just increase the substeps. Now, the SBH solver is rock solid and it, it solves velocity, the movement of particles, really accurately. But one of the problems with that is that that velocity solver is so accurate, we don't get as many of these internal kind of swirling. And so, look, with the same settings, our vorticity isn't able to create those swirls with this solver. So all we have to do is massively increase the strength with this solver. So instead of the strength being 200, uh, 20%, uh, let's put it up to 200%. And yes, look, we're starting to get those swirls coming back in that it's able to generate. Let's just start it from the beginning. So we're bringing in some swirls right from the start. So with a strength of 200, we're able to get some, but our force limit is perhaps a little bit too high. Let's reduce that limit now. So it's a higher limit. And yeah, look, we're starting to able to... Um, read those swirls, exaggerate them, multiply them, and get that nice kind of swirling current effect. We could even perhaps go down smaller with our SPH to a smaller size. We could even increase our strength up to, say, 300. So we're able to get the same or a similar effect with our SPH solver. Let's put our force limit up a bit. So we've got some more force in there. Yeah, that's way, way more um, angry. But you have to be much more aggressive with your settings when using the SPH fluid solver. But that is the basics of how we can use this brilliant modifier NX Vorticity to create this natural swirling and eddies in our water simulations.